What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we have the 60 volt 2024 Wired Freedom. This is right before they did the dual battery uh, rear rack and so we are going to add a 60 volt cube battery in a rack bag with the Bike Case Big Daddy rack bag and the Hylong 60 volt 20 amp hour battery. We will be adding a Datex DX2 with our 12 AWG wiring, we will adapt from the XT90s to XT60s and then into a bag here on the rack, get the DX2 in there, and then make the battery connection in the Big Daddy rack bag from Bycase. We will be leaving links to all the products in the description below. We are pretty excited about this. This bike is unbelievable. Very, very, very sensitive on the throttle and it moves you. It's like taking a whole shot on a ski boat with one of these bikes. It's pretty crazy. Top speed, just under 40 miles an hour, and its sizing is right for me. I love the way the handlebars sit. Uh, it's really nice. We did already add an aftermarket seat, and the full suspension is pretty great as well. Stick around to the end of the video where we will give you some range calculations utilizing the Mica Toll Constant. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. This is going to be a doozy. Uh, I know everybody's curious how it's going to be done. I think I have a pretty good idea, so let's get to it. Okay, the very first thing I'm going to do is take out these four screws. One here, one here, and then two more on the opposing side. Now that we have those loose, we'll bring this down so you can get a look at it. It's a uh, 20 amp rated current, so that you're nominal. 40 plus or minus 2 amps, so either 38 up to 42 amp max current. 60 volts, it's just, it's just an unreal setup. Uh, this controller compartment is very small for what it is, so uh, there will be no storage in here with the device. You can also see that the XT90s are right here. So we're probably just going to try and bring them back out of the opening instead of mess around with anything inside. So just like that. And then what I'll do to make everything even is just go ahead and cut this zip tie. And I'll get it around the wrap here. So we are external to the controller compartment. Just gonna go ahead and get these back in. we have our connection external and I'm planning to bring this right out here. We love using this bag. It's great for the uh, balancer, the combiner. Holding on to those things is quite necessary. So we're definitely going to utilize this um, and we're going to place it right in here. Now it does come with three straps. This one's typically on the bottom. I've moved it to the top and I'm just going to wrap up in this area. I'm going to take the bigger strap and go around in here. And then this lower strap, I'm just going to wrap around one of the uh, support bars for the rear rack, just so I can make sure that it doesn't fall off. Now I'm really not tightening that one down. That's just more for support. Now 
And then this larger strap is where I'm after. So I'm just going to bring these two right up here. These two ends, this is the same strap. So now for the rear mounting, we've got the MIK mount, and this is the carrier plate, and this thing's pretty awesome. Um, it's supposed to be a very easy install, so we're going to get this thing on there. What I'm doing is just loosening these because they will slide out like so to match the width of the rear rack. Let me get my clamps tightened down. Then I'm going to center my rack. There we go. Now the bag has an opening that's perfect for this. It does come with a shoulder strap, so you can actually release this from the rack. And then the reason I chose this is not because I just wanted to fill this with battery, but because it has these awesome side bags that come out and it provides extra storage when you need it. And then when you don't, you just roll them back up. I appreciate that very much. All right, for this, there's a front hook and then a rear latch, and the rear goes here. You can see this block will match that area. So you make sure your front hook is in first, and then snap it in. And you can see I can actually lift the bike. That's that. So you have your key in here, and then the cover, and then you have your strap as well. And then we're going to take our 60 volt battery and then just drop it in. Okay, for this application, we're going to be using the DX2. Um, this does come with some 14 AWG wiring that's complementary. We're not going to be utilizing that, so you can hold on to that. Maybe you utilize the other output for the USB accessory. But what we are going to be using are uh, two sets of our 12 AWG extension cables, and they have the XT60 to XT90 adapters. So for this, you can't really mess it up. What you're going to do is you're going to take your adapters and plug them in. Perfect. And then you'll just plug in where possible for your two cables, one and then the other. And then you'll bring those up and then you'll plug those respectively into where it works on the DX2. And so we're going to bring it up between the suspension. And then we'll house right there. Looks like it's going to work. So before we do anything else, Let's see if we have power. Perfect. It's on, showing full power. That's good. So that's just the factory battery. We did not plug in the second battery. What I'm gonna do is heat shrink some wrap on these real quick so these yellow connectors aren't part of the show.
And what I have is some three quarter inch heat shrink tubing. There we go. And the stiffer wire makes this a whole lot easier. It's perfect. And then I've got my heat gun. Just be careful if you do this with this braided wrap, it will melt before anything else, so watch out for that. Perfect. So I'm planning to bring everything up this way. So I'll feed this through here. I'm going to give this one last wrap right here so it doesn't hold any water. Now, there is a spot right here underneath where I am going to zip tie these two cables right around this lower post. And that'll help give me initial support. There's that. And wrap them again. So I'm going to plug in the output, which I know is to the controller. And then I'm only going to need, it looks like, one more um, 12 AWG connector. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in here, and that will be my connection for the second battery. It's going to be input. And then we know that the factory battery is here because this is the one that came out of the controller box. That. So this one's loose. Let's check for power. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. So now we are dual battery connected. And then also what I'm going to do is zip tie these two right here. So if you have a bunch of accessories, we do sell a USB adapter, which when you don't have a dual motor output bike, and all you need is one for one controller, then you can go ahead and plug this into one of the outputs. And voila, you now have power to two USB plugs for all of your accessories. Something to keep in mind, this is not something we're gonna add now, but it is available. So it's a good addition for the DX2. It allows you to utilize that output so it doesn't just sit. I've changed my mind. I'm going to use this second cable so I can have all black coming up to it. 
Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I want my zipper plug here to have the length to reach all the way around where it's closing in the bag. I'm just going to plug that in and I'm doing it. I'll take this excess and just put it in the bag with the battery. Looks like there's this nice strap to put it underneath, so that'll be even more beneficial. We'll do that. It also looks like it would be worthwhile to get it underneath this strap on the cell phone bag. I'm going to do that too. Well, there you have it. We have successfully added another 20 amp hour, 60 volt battery to this Wired Freedom. This bike is ready to rock. I know a lot of you stuck around to the end of the video for the range calculations, so let's just get to it. The original battery is 20 amp hours, and we added another 20 amp hours with the Cube High Long battery. So it's 20 plus 20 equals 40. Multiply that times 60, and you get 2,400 watt hours. And we'll divide that by 25. And 25 is the Mica Toll constant, which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour throttle only. <laughs> and you get 96 miles. Oh my goodness. This bike is ready for the long range challenge. Normally, I'd tell you to look into a suspension seat post. You just may want to cushion your seat, but this thing's full suspension. So it has worked out great. We are going to give this a ride. We're going to take it to the shop. Excited to get on this bike again. Uh, always wear a helmet with this bike because it is on a next level, and I'm super excited for it. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. Let's get on this speed demon. Yes! <laughs>